Welcome to Forgotten Coast Fishing. Here it is, January the 2nd, 2023. Obviously, you can see behind me, we've got quite the fog setting in. You can see that sailboat anchored right there. So visibility is probably a quarter mile or less. So I've uh, got the radar going. The goal for today is um, we had some extra bait left over um, from some fishing a couple days ago. Now that grouper season is closed, um, trigger fish season is closed, that kind of thing. But I've got all this bait I want to use up instead of just tossing it. So the goal today is to target some near shore reefs in about 25 feet of water. So might be a little tough getting out here with this fog. We'll have to go slow, but uh, we'll see what we can do. So we changed spots, really didn't have any bites on the more shallow reef. So we pushed out to about 62 feet of water. Uh, it's a little rougher, but uh, showing some, some good signs on the depth finder. So we'll see what we do at this spot. All right, so get some nibbles right off the bat. That's a good sign. I believe this is a um, this is a white trout. Yeah, that's a little white trout. There's really no regulations on these things, so um, we'll get him in the box. This is a good sign. You know, I have not caught these in a long, long time. This is a white trout. Last time I believe I caught these was 20 some odd years ago off the coast of Mississippi. And uh, back then, what would happen is you would get into just a huge school of them. They're, they don't get that big, but um, you know, they're good as they're good to eat, probably fry these if I get a good number of them. So let's get our hands washed up. As you can see, I got some chum. Let's give it a go. I'd call that a successful day if I can get a number of those. Right. We don't want to lose him. Another white trout. You see their mouth looks exactly like a speckled trout. Got one or two front top teeth. Mouth is very similar. In fact, the fish is very similar. We're just without the spots. Little kind of rainbow color on top. So that's a nice. That's a nice white trout. I'm, I'm happy with these things. Three in the box so far. Let's do it again. You know, they, another white trout, I'm quite sure, but they sure do have the initial strike like a spotted sea trout. Real fast, aggressive bite. And a decent, you know, pull for their size. So, well, that's because I had two of them. This white trout was certainly not the target species today, but uh, hey, something to take back. Huh. 
<laughs> I am just ecstatic about these white trout. Well, it's going to be another Tom Tate. Now you catch these a lot out here. They're they're good bait fish for grouper and snapper and that kind of thing. They have a red mouth. Oh, it's still not lifted. You can see the sun's kind of starting to peek out, but it's been two days of this fog and the Grady's got a radar. So I'd have been pretty nervous trying to get out here. white trout. Here we go. Had an initial strong pull. Slacking up just a little bit. Let's see if it's another white trout. Sure is. Beautiful. Got another one. much for the sun burning the fog off it seems to have regressed a little bit maybe I shouldn't wish for bright sun when you're catching fish just a double tom tate again let's change sides of the boat so I do have a chum bag out it's kind of hoping some of this chum might bring mangrove snapper up or two as like I said grouper Trigger fish, red snapper are not in season right now, but uh, we're not quite deep enough for bee liners, which is a vermilion snapper. Those tend to be 100 or so feet of water or close to it, and we're just in barely 60. But uh, mangrove snappers, of course, it's the winter, and they like to. Oh, here we go. Let's see what this is. But, you know, you might get some out here on the reef. Chum sometimes will pull them up. Pretty skittish, though. Now let's see what we got here. It's taking a little run. I guess changed to the other side of the boat was the ticket. I'm gonna cut up some of these cigar minnows. I'm probably not even gonna be using them today, or at least not that many. So let's, instead of just throwing these back whole later on today, I think I'm gonna try to maybe get our chum going a little bit more. I'm gonna do the Sort of a double offering. Put a little more squid on this hook and then put a little piece of cigar minnow on the other one.
believe I'm just getting tom tape bites. You know, their mouths are a good bit smaller than those white trout. And I'm trying to use a little bit bigger pieces of squid or that cigar minnow, obviously. And uh, trying to attract more white trout that way. Had a decent show on the fish finder. Well, what did he take? Looks like he took the cigar minnow. Well, let's try that again. Another white trout. I think I just lost my knife. Told myself earlier to be organized and got to find a good place to put a knife when I get a new one. Not sure I have anything else to cut up with quid and fish. All right, so I had that cut up cigar mitt on one hook and squid on the other. The last two or three fish I've caught, white trout anyway, I've been on that cigar minnow cut up, so I'll put two pieces on this time. Let's see if we can attract more of those. Here we go. Not a whole lot of weight to it. Another Tom Tate. So I've caught three species today. White trout, Tom Tate, and that white grunt. Only problem with this cigar minnow pieces is it comes off a lot easier. Squid will last you a long time. I think he got off. Probably got my pet bait as well. Let's give it one shot to see. No. Nope. Seems rather small. Oh, nice white trout. Just like your speckled trout. How many times have you caught a speckled trout? And he comes to your boat just with this little part hooked right there. That's why you always want to keep a little pressure on trout. Just in case it's in that loop of skin on the side of their mouth. Well, I lost my knife a few minutes ago, so only thing I've got on board is my little braid scissors. Not the best, but it's what I've got. I've been telling myself I need to I need to get a holder for my knife that's convenient that I'll get into the habit of putting there every time I'm done using it. But I hadn't done that yet, so I carelessly just placed it on the board here and heard a noise and saw it go off the back of the boat. They're hitting it before it even gets to the bottom. Now I like to keep my rod tip down just hovering the bottom. If I feel like it gets off I can open the bale and let it sink again. And then I can have a little room to kind of bring it up like that. And remember, you don't want to yank with circle hooks and more of a reel when you 
you'll feel like you've got it. And they'll nibble on it. And when you feel, feel him pull it down, that's a kind of an indication that he has it in his mouth and he's running with it a little bit. just a reel. I don't know if he's still on. I need to check the bait anyway. Oh, some little baby tom tates. Here we go. This seems like it's got some weight to it. Or it could be too. <laughs> Now, I don't really need to be pumping the reel like this, but it's just kind of easier to get them up than just a straight reel. Oh, I guessed right, a double hookup. We can get one up to see what it is. It's just Tom Tate. We'll kind of think about heading home. Well, <laughs> what do you say to that? I said if we get a Tom Tate, we're gonna think about going home. But we got a little white trout again. All right, so I'm gonna head on back to the house. Certainly a great day of fishing. It's getting a little rough, so I wanna kinda of get on back before it gets too rough, but uh, we'll see you back at the house. So back at the house now, it's able to kind of get up and check out the fish in the ice chest. We got 23 white trout today, so I'd say that's a pretty good day. I'm going to get over to the cleaning table and we'll clean these fish. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clean these fish here. I clean these white trout same way you do a speckled trout. They're essentially the same fish, but what I do is kind of go right behind the gills Kind of make it at an angle just like you start out any fish go down to the belly cut through the belly kind of to the anus there then you want to pull out all this including the swim bladder this is tough right here if you if that gets in your way you'll have a hard time getting through that then you just follow the backbone all the way through I always stop at the, I don't go all the way through at the tail, I stop. That way the fish gives me a little, a little more weight as I'm getting the skin off. And what I do is I just use my left hand just to kind of follow my knife, kind of keeping pressure. See as I inch it down just to kind of keep things still on the table. Then go all the way through. Then you can just kind of follow this rib bone, this rib cage. Just kind of follow that. And cut it off check for bones if you have any they're usually going to be about right here so that one's good then you just flip it over kind of getting everything out of the way keeping that out of the way then just do the same thing on this side cut down at an angle get down to the backbone and just kind of follow the backbone all the way to the end stop flip all that over get it out of the way and just do the same thing on this side kind of have to work your knife you'll kind of feel if you start to kind of go through the skin and you can kind of angle it back up a little bit angle it up down to get all the skin off cut this rib cage bones out feel for bones and that's how you do it and then what I like to do 
I have this ice chest that I fill with ice and some water and I like to uh, just go ahead and put my fillets down on that. Keeps everything nice and cold until um, I'm finished, especially when you have a lot of fish like this. You don't want your fillets just sitting on the fillet table or somewhere else. So, all right, well, I'm gonna finish these, uh, finish cleaning all these fish. All right, so I got the fish clean. Uh, before we close out this video, I wanna just go over the takeaways from today. I think number one is, you know, when snapper and grouper and, you know, those kind of things are out of season, you know, there's still a, the ability to get out there and catch some keeper fish, you know, like the white trout today. Just don't forget about them like I did. I was um, surprised to get them, but then remembered, you know, I've caught those in the past. Like I said, it's probably been 20 or so years ago. So, um, you know, that, that's a good takeaway, you know, and you can still get out there and catch some, some keeper fish that, you know, tastes really good. Um, you know, number two is, you know, the white trout, um, they need to be kept really cold or else their flesh gets a little mushy. And as, as you saw in the video, I really didn't have enough ice today. Wasn't that big of a deal. I didn't, you know, notice the fillets were, were in that bad of shape. But, um, you know, it's best if you can have a lot of ice and uh, keep those fish as cold as possible. Um, so I just want to go ahead and close out this video and, you know, ask you to subscribe, you know, if you like this content. This is our first video. And if you're unfamiliar with what I'm, what I'm going to be doing on this channel at Forgotten Coast Fishing is I'm new to this area in the panhandle of Florida. I've been fishing saltwater most of my life. Um, I've got a, the bay boat over here I've had for some time. The Grady White behind me I've just recently purchased, so I'm able to get out in our bays as well as our offshore um, reefs and, and areas out there. So what I'm going to do on this channel is um, you know, kind of take you with me and use my knowledge of fishing to learn this new area. You know, hope, hopefully you can come along and, and learn some of those tips and tricks that I'm using to learn this area to help you catch fish in your area. So until next time, we'll see you later.